Okay, we're back today. Welcome back, welcome back. So, uh, today we're going to start uh, in earnest to dive headfirst into data structures. The last couple of lessons that we did were practice sessions to get used to creating some algorithms. And um, so today, so we're, today we're gonna go into uh, lists, you know, because we we did Hangman, we did uh, uh, yesterday we did Craps, so you know I think those are really good for uh, practicing and for learning how to write algorithms, but we still need to learn more about Python, so we're gonna dive headfirst into lists today. So that's probably one of the most important data structures that you can learn as a programmer. A, a, other languages call them arrays. So let's go into the Python interpreter. Okay, so let's go Python 3. And um, let's go help list. And so all these methods that start with under, under, or dunder, double under, um, those are internal. So as programmers, we don't really use those. So the first one starts here at append. That doesn't start with dunder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through, all, well, no, we're not going to go through every single one, okay? Although there aren't that many. So maybe we will, we'll see. Um, but these are fundamental in understanding how to write useful programs. So let's go into IPython and um, let's make a list, okay? And in order to make a list, the you guys already know this, but you have to use square brackets. Now, by doing that, I've now created an empty list. I'd like you guys to follow along with me so you can watch the video uh, or the lesson and um, open up your own uh, interpreter and kind of follow along. It's, it's better if you're actually doing rather than just watching. So um, now I'm going to append things into L. Now we've never done this before, so appending something in basically it means adding to it. So we're going to go l dot append and that's how methods work. Everything here on the left hand side is always going to be dot something. So for example we could go like that. And now if we take a look at what's in l, now we have a 3. We can do it again. We could append something else into it and when we look at what's in l we get that. Please note that in an actual program where we would, we would be writing in an editor, we never do this. This is meaningless in a program. The only reason this works is because in an interpreter, when you type a variable, it automatically tells you what's inside of it. But in a program, right, that you would write in an editor, you'd have to go like this. Okay? But you know, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to type print all the time in an interpreter because I don't have to. But understand that if you want something to show up in a regular program with an editor, just typing the variable name does nothing. Okay, that only works in the interpreter. So I don't want you to get confused by this. A lot of students find this confusing. All right? Now, um, so obviously append will append things to the end. So if we append again, uh, let's put it, make it a different number. Notice now that always we're appending to the end of the list. You never append to the beginning. Okay, so append always adds to the end. And Obviously, in this case, the length of L would be, there's three objects in there, three. And the indices in this case would be 0, 1, 2. So that's append, okay? Um, 
Then there's clear, which basically, uh, this is actually a nice addition. I really like this. Uh, I don't think Python 2 had this. So a very nice addition to Python 3. Uh, L dot clear. And when you do that, boom, there's nothing in L anymore. So it's a way that, so now you might say, okay, well, why is L dot clear useful? After all, listen, watch this, right? So let's say I had, uh, let's say I had this list, okay? If I wanted to clear the list, if I wanted to delete everything inside of it, couldn't I just go like this? And boom, now there's nothing inside of it anymore. Why do I need clear? And the answer is extremely subtle, but very important. And here's the answer. Let's say, for example, um, you know, you're, you are um, in a function. And so actually, you know what would be best here? is um, here. This is, I think I have to actually show you the, I've got, I gotta take a, a moment from this and, and kind of show you what I mean by this. So let's make a function just called foo. And um, we're not gonna pass it anything. Um, or, or we could, it doesn't matter. Um, So let's, let, yeah, sure, let's pass it something. And now let's go um, something like L dot, L dot clear. OK? And, and that's all we're going to do. Done. The function's done. Now let's, let's, let's I think, OK, nothing's in L right now. Let's, let's say L equals. There's L. And now let's call foo. Ready? Uh, let's send L because we're sending an argument. OK, done. Now what's in L? Nothing. All right? You understand that, right? OK, that's good. Well, that makes, pretty, that, makes, that makes sense. We made a function. We cleared what was in the list. And then after we called the function, there's nothing in the list. That's great. Perfect. Well, let's try it the other way. Ready? Watch this. Def boo now. And let's send L. And now instead of clearing it, let's go L equals empty list. And now uh, let's change. Oops. Oops. What just happened? Uh, yeah. I got to go back and make L. OK, so now L is 1, 2, 3 again. Now let's call boo. Ready? Oh, we got to pass L to it. Hold on. OK. So now let's see what's in L. Uh-oh, we didn't clear it. Why is that? Well, the answer is that as soon as you have a variable with an equal sign after it, now it means inside the function, you have a local variable. So in essence, as soon as you have a local variable, you're not, you're not dealing with the global one that you created outside of the function. So now you've got like two different things. One one L inside the, the function that's local, and then one L that's outside the function that's global. You're not, as soon as you have the equal sign, since you have a local variable, you're not affecting the global one. Whereas this, you're not creating a new local L, so therefore, because there's no equal sign, right? So therefore, you are affecting the global one. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? So that's why Python 3 comes with clear. And just to, you know, just to uh, kind of prove it to you, 
watch this. If I go into Python, and then I'm in, now I'm in Python 2.7, and I go help list, oops, I'll scroll down here, and notice they've got append, count, extend. Notice they're alphabetical. There's no clear. So this was a really nice addition um, to Python 3. Okay, can come in pretty handy sometimes. All right, let's move on. Uh, so now we've got uh, we've got copy. That's a shallow copy. Um, I'm not. That's a shallow copy. So I'm not actually sure. I might have to look this up later, but. Um, I'm not actually sure what the, di like if I made another list, and if I went like this, if I made a full slice, what would be the difference between a full slice and a copy? So if we went um, b equals l dot copy, oops. Um, and notice it says copy doesn't take anything, right? So in this case, A is going to be 1, 2, 3, and B is going to be 1, 2, 3. And they're both different because if I change L, if I go L dot append uh, 5, right, then L is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 5, but A is still 1, 2, 3, and B is still 1, 2, 3. Okay? That's not the case if you simply go... Like, for example, if you went C equals L. So in this case, C is now 1, 2, 3, 5. But if you change L, if you go L dot append uh, something else, now C is also going to have that. So, so this is just creating an alias. It's just creating like another name tag for the same object in memory. You're not actually creating something new. You're just making another name for the same thing. Whereas uh, copy, right, creates something new, and it's a shallow copy. So, you know, uh, what's, a, what's a definition of a shallow copy and, and what's a deep copy? Perhaps I'll leave that for another class. I don't want to get too far into this at this point, but I'll, I'll definitely go over what's the difference between a shallow copy and a deep copy in the future. But I don't think that's a good idea to do that right now because I'm just introducing this to you. Um, but like I said, I'm not really sure what's the difference between a full slice and copy. I'd have to actually look that up and if I, if I find out, I'll let you guys know. Um, then there's count. Okay, so let's try doing count. So in this case, obviously, we'd have to have some duplicates for count to um, make any sense. So I could go l dot append. Uh, how about another a two? And then I'll do it again. And now uh, l is got one two three five six two two. And so if I went l dot count, and I said tell me how many twos there are, it would return three. Please note again, once again, this makes no sense in a edited program that you're writing. This only works in the interpreter because I'm not assigning the value to anything. It's simply returning the value and showing it in the interpreter, but I'm actually not doing anything with the return value. I'm stressing this because uh, so many times I'll like watch students code and th they do this and they go, well, why isn't it working? And they don't understand that this expression here gets replaced with the three. So it's just like typing this into a program. It's just like typing three. Well, if you type three, nothing's going to happen. But if you type x equals three, now something happens. Now you stored that value in a, loca in a memory location, right? So in essence, what I'm saying is you'd have to go like this to either store the value or you could, if you, if you didn't want it to be stored, you could print it, and so on, right? So that's count. Extend, okay, so um, 
Oh, uh, by the way, um, let's just go back to count for a second. If I put a number that's not in there, right, like uh, let's say a se I don't think I have a 7 in there. So x is now 0. OK? So it just, it just counts how many occurrences something occurs in the, in the list. Um, now, extend is a is little different than append. And here's why. Let's say, for example, we have another, I think what was a was 1, 2, 3, right? Well, what if we went l, and what's l? l is that. What if we went l dot append a? Now, you'd think it might add 1, 2, 3 on the end, but it's not. Look what's going to happen. Now we have a list within a list. So you have added A onto the end, but A is a list itself. So now you have a list inside of a list. And that's not what we wanted. We wanted the 1, 2, 3 to be added on. So um, let's, uh, now I'm going to have to show you something else, but uh, let's, just, let's just go like this for now, and then we'll, we'll do it in order. Okay, so at this point, I've got L, and I want to append A, but I don't want to append it. I just want to add those things to it on the end without creating a new list inside of it. That's called extend. And so when I do this, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, because A was 1, 2, 3. Okay? Um, so that's extend. Now we've got index. Yeah, I think, I think we should do all of them. Actually, they're all really, really super important. So uh, index is also really important here. Um, index actually will tell you, uh, it says, return the first index of value. So in other words, if I was to say, all right, where is the 3? OK, well, there's two 3's in this thing, in the L, right? Here we go, 1, 2, 3. What's the location of that 3? And please don't say it's in the third location, because it's not. Remember, locations or indices start at 0. So therefore, the 3 would be at index 0, 1, 2. So if I went L dot index of 3, it's going to give me 2. Okay, That's going to return 2. Um, and of course, you know, I could do that again. I could go ill. Uh, and, th and that's the first one, right? And that's, that's the first one. Um, the other, the other uh, thing that I can do here, by the way, if you look over here in terms of index, there are two optional arguments. See these optional arguments? Notice optional arguments are in square brackets. The other ones didn't really. Append, clear, copy, and count didn't have those. But index does. So what does this mean? So I mean, I've only pro uh, provided one argument for index, which is the value uh, right here. Okay. But what are these two guys? Well, essentially what it means is we can start l looking for this value at a certain location. Okay. So um, let's say I want to look for the 3 again, but this time, I don't want to start at 0. I want to start at 0, 1, 2, 3. So at the 4. So I can go like this. I can go comma 4. So I could, what this means is start looking for, to tell me where in the list there is a 3. OK? And start looking at. Um, 0, 1, 2, OK, yeah, that, I messed up there. I should put a 3 there. So start looking at index 3, which is the number 4. And if I do that, it says 7. And so let's count. 0, 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it found the three, but it's at location seven. That's because it started looking, starting from the four or index three. Now the other thing which we can do, right, is we can specify where to stop looking. We didn't here. We left the last argument, which again, notice this is bracketed, but this is also bracketed twice. That means the stop argument is, is again optional. So we could put a third argument in index and go, all right, well, let's stop at, at let's say, 6. So if we now went 6, it's not going to find it. And so it says 3 not in list because the 6 was this 2, right? Um, if, we, if we went 7, will it work? Let's just try it. Right, and that's because that's like a Python um, range, and you have to go one past the end. Just like range, right? You have to go one past the end, and now it finds it. So don't forget these last two these last two arguments are just like start and stop in range. So that is the exact start location, but this has to be one past where you want to keep looking. Okay? Um yeah. But if you want to keep looking all the way to the end, you can just omit it all together, and then it'll just keep looking all the way to the end, starting at that location. So this is very, very um, flexible and useful. However, please note that when it doesn't find it, it doesn't just, it, it actually crashes. So your program is going to crash with a value error. And that's important to note, okay? So if you look for something, so in other words, many times, many times, what you can do in order to prevent your program from crashing, you could do this. For example, I could say, if, um, so what, what's in my list right now? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. So let's look for six. There's no six, right? So you could say, if, 6 in L, and then you could say L dot index 6. Now, if I, if, uh, are, well, I'm not going to, let's just go print here, because nothing's going to happen unless I print it, right? So when I run this, nothing happens. Now, I could run it again, and I could, oops, hold on. I could say, uh, else print uh, six not in list. And when I run that, it says six not in list. So th in, in other words, yes, index is going to crash if it doesn't find it, but you can put a little if statement in there to protect yourself from your program crashing if you're looking for something that doesn't exist with index. Okay? Um, yeah. Obviously, there's another way to do this as well. Um, you can also use, uh, now this isn't in here right now because this is this is a little different because find is actually works on iterables and all these things we're looking at on in this left hand pane are specifically for uh, lists but if we went l dot find let's try this six uh, there you go so uh, I think find then was for strings because, let me open up a, I, I thought it was for iterables, but I guess I was wrong. Um, if we go Python 3 and I go help 
str um, yeah okay so my bad so find was only for um, for strings and and the important thing about this is that uh, find returns negative one on failure so unlike index which actually gives you a value error notice the difference here right so you can't use you can't use find on a list but you can use find on a string so we'll, 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 go, we'll, um, we'll do strings another time. Right now, let's focus on, uh, let's focus on lists. OK, so that's enough about index. Uh, let's move on. So then there is insert. OK, insert is obviously, so append always adds to the end. And then there's insert, which, uh, you can basically put the whatever you're inserting, the object you're inserting, anywhere in the list that you want to. So again, let's let's take a look at what this is, and um, let's let's recreate L and go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then let's uh, let's insert a nine let's say at the very beginning. So I'd go l.insert. And so now notice the first argument is the index of where you want it to go. So in this case, if I wanted it to go at the very beginning, I would go 0. And then I'd say now the object. And now I want to insert a 9 at the beginning. And so now what l is, there it is. So there's the 9 at, this, at the start. Okay. Um, if I wanted, let's say, to put it in between the 2 and the 3, if I wanted to put an 8 right in the middle there between the 2 and the 3, do you know what, what, to, what to do in that situation? Think about it for a second. I want to put an 8 right between the 2 and the 3. So count indices, right? 0, 1, 2, Three, so I want it to be the have index three. So I'd go l dot insert index three, and I want to put an eight. And now when I do that, I have an eight right between the two and the three. Okay, so uh, that's insert. So you, now, obviously, if you wanted to put it at the very end. You wouldn't really use insert, you'd use append. And then the next one is pop. Uh, pop is super, super useful. And it's basically the, it's kind of the opposite of append, but it's got a little bit more functionality to it, in fact. Um, one, one thing that I, I wanted to uh, let you know regarding the documentation here on the left. Notice that when you have this arrow here, right? It, this arrow tells you what it's returning. Okay? So some things return an integer, some things return none, some things return an integer, right? Uh, this insert doesn't return anything. But pop actually returns, this is interesting, because pop's actually doing two things. You might not think of it that way, but it is. Pop's actually returning the item. First of all, let's, let's think about what pop does. So let's take a look at this. And I want to get rid of that last five. So the very last thing in this list, uh, this five, I want it to disappear. So I'll go l.pop. And now. Notice it returned something. It returned the 5. So if I went, no, let's just see what, there it is. So the 5 is gone. If I do it again, I'm going to take away the 4. But if I want to, if I want to save that value or do something with that last value, 
so take it out of the list, but somehow keep it, I could store it. I could say l.pop, and now x is 4. And, and also, notice l is 1 less. So notice how I said pop's doing two things, right? You're popping something out of the list, the last thing out, but you're also, it's also returning that value. So that can be super useful. Um, however, pop is more flexible than that because if you notice here, the again, in the square bracket optional argument is index. So let's say, for example, you want to take out the 9 at the very beginning. So in this case, you would go l.pop 0, which now takes out the first element, not the last. And there, 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 you see now it returned the 9, but now L is missing the 9. Super, super, super useful. Very, very powerful. OK? Uh, and you can take out any item you want with that, with, with uh, the index as the argument. OK? Um, now, then there is remove, which doesn't accept an index, but rather it accepts a value. So please don't get pop and remove confused. Remove removes the first occurrence of a value. So in this case, our L is 1, 2, 8, 3. Let's take out the 8. So I'd go L.remove, oops, 8. And so now, the 8 is gone. Notice I'm not specifying the index of where it is. I'm specifying the value of what it is. OK? Question, what if you try removing something that's not in there? So let's try removing, let's say, a 7. Value error again. Your program's going to crash. OK? So again, you could use the if in uh, before you remove something to make sure your program doesn't crash. Also, by the way, it's not going to remove all occurrences. So for example, if L has 1, 2, 3, uh, let's go L.append another 2. OK, so L is now 1, 2, 3, 2. Now let's go L.remove, and let's take out the 2. Notice uh, the first 2 is gone, but the second 2 is still there. Now, you might say, well, geez, what if I want to take away all occurrences of a certain value? Well, uh, a way you could do that is you could basically go, watch, uh, let me just, um, let me go, uh, let's go l.extend, and let's put in uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, oops. Uh, 3, 2, 1, 3. OK? And so now, there's L. So I've got a 3 here. I got one here. I got another one here. And another one here. OK? So if I wanted to use remove to remove all of those, watch how easy this is. I go while. 3 in L. Look at how crazy. It's like, almost like English, right? L dot remove 3. And so now when I run this, simple one line loop, there are no more 3s. So that's one way to iterate. Basically, I mean, I don't even have to know how many there are. That loop's going to continue until all of those guys are removed. All the threes are removed. So that's, that's remove. Um, and we've got just a couple more. Uh, reverse is in place. So that means it doesn't return anything. So in this case, I think it would probably be best if I just did this. Oops, what did I do wrong? Okay. 
And if I went L dot reverse, it does exactly what you think it's going to do. It's going to reverse their order uh, from the list. By the way, I just want to stress that all of my examples in this demonstration, in this lesson, have been with integers. A list is capable of holding any type of data. So you can have a list with, you know, uh, floats in there. You can have booleans in there. You can have strings in there. Okay, all of those are also fine. All right. Um, yeah. Um, now let's go back to the int to the uh, this one. Notice though that reverse doesn't return anything. So if I, if, in other words, if I went like this, if I went x equals, it's not going to complain. But now look, x is nothing because because notice here it says it's returning none. Oh no, sorry, that's that's not the, the no, sorry. Um, it's in in place means it doesn't. It affects L. It doesn't return a new sorted list. Now, there is a way to do this, by the way. There is a way to do this, and that is with the. Uh, now, this is not actually part of the list, but I know this one works, and that's called sorted. So, th this is super important that you guys. I, I think I should teach this now because. Um, sorry, I'm actually talking about reverse here, but I'm, my brain is skipping ahead to sort. So let's leave reverse. I guess what I'm trying to explain here is what does in place mean? And in, okay, I'll just define that right now. In place means that L itself is changed. Nothing is returned, okay? So as soon as you call L dot reverse, so what's L right now? If, as soon as I go L dot reverse, L itself is changed. And there you go. It's reversed again, back to its original uh, order. All right, now let's go to sort. So boy, oh boy, um, I think this is going to take a while to explain because there's a lot to explain regarding sort. However, for now, I think I'm just going to give, uh, give it a simple explanation. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat here, and I'm going to import uh, random. And then I'm going to go uh, L dot shuffle. Oh, wait, 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 not L dot shuffle. What am I doing? Uh, random dot shuffle L. OK, and so now it's. Now, instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's 3, 1, 5, 2, 4. OK, so now uh, let's sort it. So I'll go L dot sort. And notice, again, it says sort is in place. It means you're going to modify L. Nothing is returned. Notice it says here none is returned. So uh, if I did, so. so it doesn't make sense to have something equal to this. So this is how you would call it in, a, in an editor program. OK? Uh, by the way, just to let you know, there are so many different ways of sorting things. Oh, and one more thing. So OK, back up. There's so many different ways of sorting things. But uh, as far as I recall, I'm pretty sure quicksort is used. And I know you're like, OK, what's that? But just to say that the sort algorithm that Python uses is extremely fast and efficient. OK? Um, however, there's a few things that I need to, to kind of mention here. One is, what if you don't have numbers? What if you have uh, strings? So what if I had, say, for example, a equals something like, um, App, well, apple, 
um, zebra, horse, uh, pig, dog. Okay, so now I could go a dot uh, sort. And so now, notice they're in alphabetical order. So numbers, obviously, very obvious how they would be sorted. Strings are sorted alphabetically. OK? Uh, you can also sort things in reverse order by saying like this. You could say, oops, you could say reverse equals true. And so now it's, it's backwards. Okay? You can also call uh, reverse on it too if you, if you so chose to, the one that we did before. Um, now this one, that one is, uh, I'm going to just pause for a second. Okay, so um, we've, I've given you guys quite a lot of instruction and I feel like I'm not going to go over the key part of sort, the key um, uh, option of sort right now because it's really important and I want to devote more time to that. I'm going to do that later. Instead, right now, I'm going to give you guys an assignment. So what I'd like you to do is write a computer program that will generate or create a list of 40 numbers. So so 40 uh, so 40 numbers between 10 and 99. Now the but it has to, they have to be unique. That's the tricky part here. So in other words, I don't want duplicates. Okay? Create a list. That's this is your assignment. Create a list of 40 unique numbers between 10 and 99. Okay? So pause the video now and give it a shot. All right, we're back. So let's actually uh, do the solution to this now. Um, what I'm going to say in order to do this, I'm just going to do this in the interpreter. So right now, L is 1, 2, 3, or 5. Let's make L nothing. And then um, I'm going to say while len of L is less than 40. Because, see, the reason why you might think, well, OK, why are you using a while loop? Because you know that you're going to have to have 40 items, right? So that's a known number. So why not just use a for loop? The problem with using a for loop is that I actually don't know how many times I'm going to have to uh, find a number because I might get duplicates. So watch when I do the code. This will make sense. So I'll say while the len of L, which now it's 0, right? because I've just destroyed everything in L, is less than 40, I will say uh, get me a, oh, I think, I think I've imported random here. So uh, I will say uh, num equals random dot rand range and it starts from 10 and it goes to 99 so uh, give me a hundred I gotta go one more and now I'll say if num not in L then append it And you can say not in. 
Okay, so not is a is a valid. Uh, it's like the um, it flips, right? Instead of it being in L, then it's not in L. So you would say L dot append num. And so when I do this, um, this is going to do it until there are uh, 40 things in there. So if I do this now and I go len uh, l, I'm going to get 40. And if I show you what's in there, uh, there, are no, there are no duplicates uh, in, this, in this list here. Okay, and um, yeah, and ju just to just to show you, just to make sure that it's it's very clear that there aren't, is I could sort it, and so now there shouldn't be. Now that it's sorted, it's easy to see the duplicates because they would be right next to each other. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, and so on. There's no two numbers that are uh, the same. Okay. So that, that was my solution uh, right there. So at this point, uh, I think a good thing to do would be to uh, show you guys how the, the key part of sort works. So obviously, if we had, let's say, um, I've, I've actually created this. Uh, list called A, and there's a few words in it. You can see the words. I'm going to shuffle them. Uh, random dot shuffle A. Okay, so at this point, right, it, it's just a bunch of words. However, let me sort them for you, and look what happens. Okay, so number one, there you go, it's sorted alphabetically. Uh, you know, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So let's try iterating over these guys. Ready? Watch this. Pitfall. Ready? For word in A, now this works, okay, I can go print word. Great. All right. No problem there. Uh, what if what if I wanted to? Now, I, obviously, these are already shuffled. Uh, sorry, printed. Sorry, sorted. So let's shuffle it again. Okay. So now we're gonna say, all right. Well, let's let's iterate over them again. But this time, let's go a dot sort. So now I'm just gonna iterate over the sorted. Right. Watch this. What? It doesn't work. Why doesn't this work for word in a.sort? And the answer is, listen carefully, a.sort returns nothing. So essentially, it's like saying for word in none. Since a.sort doesn't return anything, it just sorts a in place you're actually trying to iterate over nothing. So how would you do this? Well, the obvious way would be to sort it before. You could go a.sort before the loop and then go uh, for word in a. That, that's going to work. OK, so no problem here. The other way you can do it is use something called sorted. So uh, if I open another terminal and I go into Python 3 and I go um, help sorted ed, it says sorted. And it now will sort an iterable, so not just a list. Notice the difference here, OK, is that a dot sort is first you type in the list variable, whereas sorted 
Okay, so let, let's just shuffle A again, just to show you what, what the difference is. Okay, so A right now is like this, it's not sorted. But sorted A, notice it's not A dot sorted, will actually return a value, but not sort A. A is still unsorted, see? A is still unsorted. But so now, since it's not, so in other words, sorted is not in place. It's actually returning another list that is the sorted version of A. So if I went for num, or sorry, not num, for word in sorted A, now if I say print word, this works. And it's sorted. Okay? So that's actually a really good point. The difference between dot sort and sorted. Notice how they're different in that, once again, sort is uh, a dot function that is called upon the list itself. So the list dot sort. Whereas, and it's in place, so it's changing L but returning nothing. Whereas sorted does not change the original list, instead returns a sorted version of that list. Okay? So that's, that's clear. Now let's go back to the key uh, feature of dot sort. And that key is expecting a function name. So obviously, if you want to sort something alphabetically, uh, that's super fine. I mean, that's that's a normal sorting algorithm. But what if you want to sort it in a different way? And this is super useful. It's so powerful too. Uh, this can save your life sometimes. So let's say, for example, I wanted to sort these words that are right here in A. I wanted to sort them not alphabetically, but rather based on how many letters are in the word? Well, can you think of a function that will return the number of letters in a word? And of course you can, because you've done this many times before. And, and the, the function is len. Len is a function. How do we know it's a function? Answer, because we're using the parentheses, right? So if I go, if I had a, a very, uh, um, if I had a, not a, not a, well, I mean, it'll work on, it'll work on a list too, right? Like if I go len a, oops, yes, it tells me how many things are in the list, but also it'll work on a string. So if I said len a uh, zero, right, what's the first thing in, um, a, so let, let's just back up here. What's the first thing in A? It's B-E-A-U, one, two, three, four. So if I went len A, zero, this should give me four, and it does. Perfect, this, that's what it's returning. So in fact, once again, how do I know it's a function? Because it has the parentheses, not the square ones, but the round ones. It's a function call. Len is a built-in function in Python. You, we don't have to write it. It's, it's there for us to use. But watch this. If I went a dot sort bracket key equals, now the name of the function. Now this is not a function call. If it was a function call, I'd have to put this. But it's not a function call. It's, we're simply telling sort that the to use the len function to sort what is in A. Now watch this. Notice now they're not sorted alphabetically. Rather, they're sorted. Look at this is now three letters. This is bow is four letters, five letters, five letters, and more and more. That is so powerful right there you can sort things based on how many letters are in a string. And of course, if you wanted to get even more fancy, you could just uh, go reverse 
uh, equals true. And now, right? Or you could just call dot reverse on A after you've sorted it. In any case, this is super powerful. However, it doesn't stop there. I'm about to blow your socks off. Now, just imagine that I wanted to sort these letters in yet a different way where there is no built-in function like len. So I'm going to make one, I'm going to make up a fictitious uh, sorting requirement. And that is, please sort these letters, or sorry, these words, based on how many vowels are in the word. Now, what are vowels? A-E-I-O-U. So, in other words, sort them not alphabetically, not by the length of how long the word is, but rather by how many vowels are in the word. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to have to make a custom function in order to use that function for the key argument in sort. So let's do it. I'll go def uh, and I'll call it val count. Okay? And I'm going to pass it uh, a list. Okay? And then I am going to, or actually, no, sorry, I'm not going to pass it a list. I'm going to pass it a string. Okay? S. So, uh, I'm not passing a list to this, I'm passing a string. So I'm passing like automobile, argument, apple, I'm passing strings, right? So instead of using it, I could just use word, okay? So now, uh, what do I do in this function? <clears throat> I, have to say, I have to basically um, make a, a counting variable. I'll say it starts with zero. And then I'm going to iterate over the letters in the word. I will say uh, for letter in word. And then I'll say if letter is in. And now I can say, all right, if, it, if it's in, um, now I don't need to make a list here. I could actually make a string here because I can, in will work with a string. So I can say, a E I O U. And notice these are all lowercase, and everything I have here is lowercase. If you wanted to make it um, uppercase too, I could go uh, if let dot lower, but I don't need to do that right now because everything's lowercase. So now I would say if letter in A E I O U, then go C equals C plus 1, increment C. All right? And so that's it. And now uh, I'm going to go here and I'll say return. It's got to have a return value, right? I'm going to say return C. So by the end of this function, val count, I'm going to, this, if I run this function, right? So like, for example, if I go uh, val count um, and I go apple, the string apple, how many, how many vowels in Apple? Two, the A and the E. You see, how, you see what I mean? So, so this function now works. But the amazing thing now is, and, and obviously I could you know, do it for another word, like uh, B-E-A-U, like bow, and that's going to give me three, the E-A-U. Perfect. OK, so now I know my vowel count is working. Now watch this. I can go A dot sort. And now I can use my custom made function, val count. And it's not a function call. In other words, I'm not going to do that type of thing. Then it would be a call that would be wrong. I'm just going to define the function name. And so now, look what happens. It's not sorted alphabetically. It's not sorted uh, based on the length, but rather it's sorted based on how many vowels are in the words. That is power. OK? OK, so uh, I just wanted to mention one last thing regarding this, and that is 
that uh, this can be a very useful function for a variety of different situations. Uh, and I think as you continue your programming career, you'll notice how useful this will actually become. Uh, so let's move on now and um, let's go back to the uh, that that we we did a um, we did an example of uh, creating uh, this thing those those um, forty numbers. What I'd like you to do is after you create those numbers, so now you have forty numbers. Notice that uh, some of the numbers are even and some of the numbers are odd. After they're, so, so I'm not saying do this while you're creating them, but after they're created and you have the 40 numbers, what I'd like you to do is remove all the odd numbers from the list. So you're gonna, you, you, might, you might think, okay, this is kind of easy, and I can give you a hint. Basically, uh, you're gonna have to use mod, right, or modulus, uh, and then you can figure out if something is odd or even. We've done that before. And when you've done that, then uh, remove those odd integers from the list. And this is sounds deceptively easy, but there is a pitfall in this. And uh, give it a shot. So uh, try it. OK, so pause the video and give it a shot. OK, well, let's take a look at the solution. Well, in order to demonstrate this uh, and show you this pitfall, let's try and um, create a list. And so my objective here is to remove all the odd numbers, right? So let's go 1, 3, 5. Those are all odd. And let's put a couple of even numbers at the end there. Okay. And now let's go for number in L and let's try going uh, if number mod by 2 is equal to 1, which means it's uh, odd. Right? If I said it was equal to 0, then it would be even, but we want to take out the odd ones. I would simply say then L dot remove the number. Okay? Let's see if that works. Seems like it should. Let's see what's in L now. Wait a second. 3 is odd. How come the 3 was not removed. Well, the 1 and the 5 were removed, but why not the 3? So this, is a, this, this pitfall that you're looking at right now, let's try, to, let's try to do this problem a different way. You might say, OK, well, gosh, maybe there's something wrong with remove. Let's try to use a different method to remove these things. And you know, the other one we learned today was pop. So let's try using pop. The thing with pop, though, is we're going to have to provide it an index. So we're not going to iterate over the list uh, of items like that. Instead, let's go for x in range len l. Oh, wait. First, I have to fix l again. Let's make l back to what it was originally. OK, so l is back to what it was. And now let's go for x in range len l. Okay, and now let's go, let, just, to, just to show you that um, this is kind of working, right? Um, let's go print. Or, you know, I don't need to show you this because you, you guys already know this does work. So let's go if, um, again, L, X now, mod, 2 equals 1. So same as before, right? Except now you're iterating over indices, so you have to go LX, not num, right? And then we would say 
uh, l dot pop x. So we're providing the index to remove with pop. All right, let's try it. And to do tada, it says list index out of range. So this one, and by the way, let's see what's in L now. 368, the same problem. Not only did this one also fail like dot remove, so the, the three is not removed, but this one also gave us an error saying list index out of range. How, how could it be out of range if I said for x in range len L? So, I mean, if I fix L back to what it was, and I said, you know, um, if I just go, pr you know, I, I said I wasn't going to do this, but if I just go print, it just pr it prints x, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's, there's five things in there. And if I go LX, right, it's 1, 3, 5, 6, 8. So that's working. I think now maybe you, you st are having an inclination as to why this is this is failing, but let's take a look at this at a at this at a more close level, and I think you'll understand what's going on. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to kind of move over here. So let's show you what's in L. L was equal to uh, one three five six eight, okay, with indices zero one two, three, four. There's five things in there. Now, when I iterate, let's just say I'm going to iterate over them one by one, right? So uh, in this case, num is equal to, first, first thing num is equal to one, okay? And that one is, so let's, let's write down the list. One, let's write, write it again, but let's write it vertically this time. One, three, five, six, eight. And here are my indices, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, see, with, uh, with, no, with, this, with, with this way, it's not as clear as what's happening. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to go into the second one that we did, because th I think this is more... Um, understandable. So I'm going to go to this example right here. Oops. I'm going to go, oh, I'm having mouse problems. Let's go to this one. Okay. So the 4x in range len L, if this one, right, where we use pop, not remove. Because essentially the same thing is happening. But I want to show you why this is happening. Okay, so let's kind of erase this little bit here. And all right. So what we've got is at first x is going to be 0. Okay, when we're iterating through it. So we're here. Is 1 odd? Yes, it is. So let's pop it. So now, what's left in the list? 3, 5, 6, 8. Now, what are the new indices of the list? 0, 1, 2, 3. Great. Now, let's go back to the top of the loop. What's the next x value? After 0 comes 1, right? Look where 1 is. So 5 is the next value. Now do you see why the 3 was skipped? Because when you remove that 1, now everything shifts down. And this is the new index of the list. And because the next iteration of x after 0 goes to 1, now the new 1 is the 5, not the 3. So in, in essence, you're skipping over that 3, which was also odd, which had to be removed. But it never gets removed this way. So this is a huge problem. And by the way, like, you know, um, yeah, the 5 ends up getting removed, and the 6 and the 8 don't. 
but the but this is still remaining in the list as can clearly be seen, right? The th here when we we still have the three six eight. So essentially, the problem we're having is, and this is known. This is a known kind of programming pitfall. You cannot iterate over a list and modify it at the same time. Okay, I'll say it again. Listen carefully. You cannot iterate over a list and remove things from it while you are iterating through it. At least not in the way that we have done it here. Okay? There's two solutions to this. One is you simply iterate through the list and create a new list of the things which you want to keep. And then you can discard the old one. Okay? So, um, for example, let me do it like this. Uh, now, what's L? Hold on. Okay. So, for example, I might create another, an empty list. Let's say A. And then I would say uh, for... <coughs> uh, okay, so let's kind of go back here. There it is. For X in range, len L. And then I would say if... Uh, L X mod 2 equals 1 then A dot append uh, L X great okay so now what's in A only the odd ones what's in L it's unchanged so in, th in this way, okay, fine, you know, you've got all the odd ones in a, in a new list. That, that might be sufficient for you. However, wouldn't it be, so this is, this is not called being in place. In other words, um, we haven't modified L at all. We've left it, we've, we've left it intact. We've simply created uh, a new list with what we wanted to pull out of it. That's totally fine. But is there a way to iterate over uh, a list and delete things from it as you're iterating through it. And I've, I've stated, well, you can't really do this. Well, the answer is actually you can, but you have to iterate through the list in a very special way. And let me okay, so the way to do this is to iterate over the list backwards. So if I said for num, in L, and so now I'm going to take a slice of L going backwards, no, not just like that, but I'm taking a slice of L, starting from the last one, which is negative 1 index, going all the way to the beginning, which means I leave off the index, okay, and I'm stepping backwards, so negative 1. So just to show you, you know, what this looks like, if I just do print, I'm going to go 86531, which is backwards. Perfect. Okay, so I, I am iterating backwards over the list. But now I'm going to say if num mod 2 equals 1, then I will say l dot remove uh, num. Okay? Um, I have to say, though, that this method, uh, I think it should be okay. I'm just trying to see if, I'm just trying to think in my head if there's duplicates. I think it's still okay. So if I do this, yeah, okay, so it is working, although there are no duplicates. But I could try it again, right, like with the duplicate, just to make sure it's working. Um, I could go something like, like, for example, I could put a, a, a 1 and a 3 here. So now I've got duplicates. Okay, so let's try it again. Um, and, yeah, no problem. It works with duplicates too. So this works. The question now is, why does this work and before it didn't? By the way, I just want to show you also the alternative looping um, 
way of doing this would be let's let's fix back let's let's make l back to its original with the extra duplicates that we decided to put in and then let's go um, so in this case it would be for x in uh, range right now now okay so now you got to go the um, the last one is going to be len l minus one comma negative one right so one past zero and then step negative one so if we did this let's just go print uh, lx yep three one eight six five three one okay great notice I must say though that in my opinion at least uh, this looks more convoluted uh, than this. That reverse slice seems a, li a little, well, at least one less negative one in it. Okay. By the way, just remember, you cannot, so if, if you come up here in between these two uh, full uh, colons, you cannot put negative one in there, remember? Because negative one stands for in a slice, negative one stands for the last character. So in order to go to the beginning, you have to leave off, leave off the argument so that it goes to the beginning in a slice. We've done this before, that's review. But in, in range, you have to say, OK, what's the biggest index? It's len l minus 1. So if there's like you know, five items in the list, the biggest index is 4. And then you go all the way to zero, but you can't put zero here. You have to put one f past zero going backwards, which is negative one. And then obviously the step being negative one as well. So now if I was to go if lx mod 2 equals 1, then l dot pop. Uh, x. And if I do that, right, that's instead of L dot remove. And now L, it works. It's only the 6 and 8 are left. So it's up to you. Either way, you can, you can do this way to remove stuff. As long as you iterate backwards, it works. Or you could do it this way and you know, you're iterating over items or you're iterating over indices. You should know both ways and be comfortable with both, but both ways work. Question, why does it work? Well, let's take a look here. So let me just clear this. And um, so the reason why it works, right, is because, let's start again. Oops. And... So now, if you if we go, let's just go with the uh, what was it one three five six eight, and the indices were uh, zero one two three four. So when we take things out, okay. So now we're going to iterate. X is going to be. It's going to start out as four. Okay, so we're here. Is that an odd number? No. So okay, so we go to the next one. Is it, and then we're here. Is that an odd number? No. So we go to the next one. Now we're at two. Now is that an odd number? Yes, it is. So let's let's take it out. What's now left? Well, we're left with one, three, six, eight. What are the new indices? Zero, one, two, three. Now let's come back to x. What's our next x after two? It's one. So we're now here, right? This is the index, right? And this is the this is the value. You understand what's going on here? So after the five, now correctly, we're not skipping anything anymore. We're going to the next item going up, which correctly is the three. And that is also an odd number. So when we remove it, we're left with 1, 6, 8. And we have indices 0, 1, 2. 
And now, what comes after 1 going backwards? 0. And so that means we're here. And we remove that one as well. And we're left with 6, 8. See? So in other words, when you remove things out of a list, you can remove them out of the list as long as you're iterating through the list backwards. If you iterate through a list forwards and remove things, you are going to have big time problems because it's not going to work. So I, need, I really need you guys to remember this. This is a fundamental programming uh, kind of, it's a, it's a known fact by all you know, programmers. So there's, the, once again, the two ways to do it were iterating over uh, indices like this, right? With this, all these negative ones here. Or the other way to do it was to do it like this uh, and just iterate over the items. But as long as you're, then you take a negative, you, you take the slice going backwards. And in this case, you, you take the range going backwards. Okay? Well, I hope you learned a lot this lesson. Oh my God, this was probably the longest lesson to date. So, uh, probably would have been a good idea maybe to maybe not learn this all in one shot. But there you go lists in Python. See you next time.